Hi everyone, I'm Jane Applegath. Welcome to the Epic Vision Zone. Our goal with this show and company is to bring you trailblazing women from around the globe to share their ideas, their knowledge, their resources, and inspiration to help you transform your dreams into epic success. Our very special epic entrepreneur today is a woman who knows all about thinking outside the box breaking down barriers, creating opportunity, exercising fearless tenacity, all while being a mom to four incredible kids, a lifestyle change that she, her husband, and kids have grown into and are now flourishing in. Kara Golden is the founder and CEO of Hint, a healthy lifestyle brand that produces award-winning fruit essence, sugar and preservative free waters, a leading drink that has been dubbed the Coca-Cola for the next generation. Today, Kara is the recipient of numerous accolades, including being named Ernst and Young Entrepreneur of 2017, one of InStyle's 2019 Badass 50, along with being featured in Forbes magazine on building a beloved beverage empire and one of Fast Company's most creative people and so much more. In addition to running hints, Kara is a newsletter author, host of her own podcast, Unstoppable with Kara Golden, where she interviews founders, entrepreneurs, and disruptors across all industries. Her first book, Undaunted, Overcoming Doubts and Doubters, was released in October 2020 and is now a Wall Street Journal and Amazon bestseller. Kara lives in the Bay Area with her family. Welcome, Kara Golden. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I know you have a full schedule and we're going to get started right now. You have a very interesting journey that you took from executive to entrepreneur. Share that story with our audience. Yeah, so I started my career actually in media and that sort of uh, parlayed into tech. And, uh, and then pretty soon, I guess, I ended up getting into the beverage space or the health and wellness space, depending on how you want to look at it. And I think for me, it, it really stemmed out of me just kind of feeling like I had this challenge in my life that I had been trying to figure out, that I had not been as healthy as I wanted to be. I'd gained a bunch of weight. I had uh, you know terrible energy levels over the years, and I just wasn't myself. And that's when I looked at everything that I was eating and drinking and, and um, had pretty much given up until one day I, I looked a little closer at what I was drinking, which was primarily diet soda. And I decided if I gave up my diet soda um, just to test this concept of drinking water instead of drinking diet soda, that maybe some things would change. I didn't really think that they would, but I thought I want to exhaust that possibility. And there was only one problem, and that was that water really did not taste very interesting to me. And so I had been slicing up fruit and throwing it in the water thinking, okay, well, this gets me to drink water. Let's really see what's going to happen. And after a few weeks, that's when my energy levels came back. I ended up losing over 20 pounds, at, like lots of changes that I thought, frankly, I was a little surprised by. And that's when I looked for a product in the grocery stores that was just fruit and water with no sweeteners, no diet sweeteners, no sugar in it, because I didn't want to go back to having the sweetness. And I was shocked that everything had sweeteners in it. I couldn't believe it. So with my idea, I thought, I'm going to take this idea to the supermarket. I still wasn't thinking about it as becoming an entrepreneur or taking on the soda industry, the big soda industry. Instead, I thought, if I can bring a product to the shelf that people buy that helps them get healthy, that would just be awesome, right? That would make me feel like I was contributing, that I was doing something that was, 
you know, mission driven, et cetera. And so that little dream started 16 years ago. Um, and uh, today, Hint is the largest private independent beverage company in the country that doesn't have a relationship with Coke, Pepsi, or Dr. Pepper, Snapple, any of the big guys. Uh, and again, we did it out of bringing, you know, this idea that I had in my own life to others. Wonderful. The mission was there. You know, it yeah. was more than a beverage. It was, it, it was a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so inspiring. I could, I could see the energy behind that. And one of the reasons that it's taken off so incredibly successfully. So here you are, you're running a multi-million dollar company. You have four incredible children. You have, uh, you're, you're doing a podcast and all kinds of other things. And then you take it upon yourself to write a book. <laughs> which is one of my absolute favorites. I love your book, Undaunted. Oh, um, thank you. Love it, love it, love it, because it's it's more than just the story of you. It's lessons learned along the way, and that is so needed for entrepreneurs because where I'm all about inspiring those who are coming up the ranks and how it can be done. So give us a little insight into your inspiration to writing this book. Well, about a little over five years ago, I started journaling, and uh, and that really was uh, kind of trying to use up time in when I was traveling, and I thought, you know, it's time to start writing out maybe um, some of these stories that I have over the years that, frankly, I felt like were helping people uh, along the way as I shared with different entrepreneurs or, you know, want to be entrepreneurs, some of the challenges that I had, or just overall, just kind of explaining the journey. And so it was about two years ago that I thought, wow, this 600 page journal could actually help a lot more people that maybe aren't going to the talks that I give or, um, you know, haven't heard my stories. Maybe I could help a lot of other people just by sharing uh, in, in a, initially I, I thought about it as, binding my journal. Uh, a friend of mine who's written a few books, I called her and I said, how do I bind my journal and get it out there? And she said, you mean write a book? And I said, oh no, <laughs> writing a book is way too daunting. I mean, how could I, 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 I have a full-time job as a CEO. I mean, where would I find time? And then when she <laughs> took a look at the journal and she said, you, you definitely have a book here. I think the hardest thing will be, which she was right, is to edit it down and get it into a format of, you know, a few hundred pages that uh, people will actually read and it not be too daunting for the reader. So, uh, so that's what I did. It's called Undaunted Overcoming Doubts and Doubters. And, you know, I think the most surprising thing for me that I didn't realize about the book is I knew it would help entrepreneurs, certainly beverage entrepreneurs or food entrepreneurs, there's lots of little tips and things that I, you know, learned along the way. But I'm hearing from so many people who have never even thought about being an entrepreneur. They've never been an entrepreneur. They, it was never even in their dialogue. And I think in particular, what this pandemic has done is really had people kind of rethink some things like what do I want to do with my life? What like what mission am I on? What problem can I solve for people? And that to me, again, is so exciting to hear this from people that very similar to my product Hint Water that I when I developed it, I did it to help others get healthy. With the book, I feel like I did it because I felt like I could help people kind of not just build up the walls and never get started or know that like them, I had doubts. I, I had my doubters. I thought about, you know, ways that I shouldn't be doing this, uh, or I should say I, I had different situations where I shouldn't have been actually starting. And so I think about ways that I should stop or whatever it was along the way. And, and so for me, it was really, can I get this book out there and help share with people 
that my passion for entrepreneurism, my, my passion for just going and getting started and trying, all of those things are really laid out in the book. Yes, and they really are. Um, they, it covers so many different topics. Um, and you mentioned the subtitle, Overcoming Doubts and Doubters. Uh, that is so powerful and a big driving force for you in your life and what you've been through. Can you tell us what's one of the proudest personal moments of that in action? Yeah, so I, I had a situation, uh, it was about a year into Founding Hint where I was, uh, I was very excited to be able to talk to a very senior executive from Coca-Cola. Uh, a friend had connected me. It was at a point in my journey where I couldn't figure out how to distribute our product across the U.S. We were local in, in my market where I live in the Bay Area, but I didn't know how I was going to be able to, you know, get distribution in Colorado or Chicago or New York. And so... A friend connected me with somebody that she had met uh, at Coca-Cola, and I, I remember thinking, "Gosh, I, I'm so, I'm going to be very prepared for this meeting. It's it's a uh, it's a big deal." And um, obviously, this person is, you know, very senior at a multi-billion-dollar company. They know a lot more than I do. I was not prepared to hear what I heard about 15 minutes into this conversation, which after me sharing how well we were doing and how people were buying it and stores were reordering, that's when this uh, gentleman uh, said to me, uh, sweetie, Americans love sweet. This product isn't going anywhere. And I thought, whoa, did he just call me sweetie? I, I think I tuned out for like, you know, 30 seconds and thought, okay, now what do I do? Do I hang up the phone? Do I tell him, excuse me, why did you, you know, call me sweetie? And I didn't say anything. I just continued to listen because I was so shocked by what I had heard. I mean, by the way, I, I'd never been called sweetie before in my life. And I think for me, it was just, you know, it, it, it I think it all, almost caused me a, a moment to really, really pay attention to who I was listening to across um, you know the phone line and that's when I uh, I continued to listen for the next 45 minutes and him share sort of his point of view about why this consumer was just looking for sweet and how his goal was to get calories from you know 10 calories down to zero which is where uh, you know diet drinks were at that time and uh, and I remember hanging up the phone. I'm sure he thought that at that point I was quitting. I was, you know, closing up this little company, this little dream that I had. And it was at that moment when I hung up and I thought, you know, something that my parents used to say to me, maybe when somebody would say something to me that I disagreed with, they would, uh, they would say, you know, consider the source. And you have to understand whether or not that person who is, in, in my case, giving me all kinds of doubts that he had um, from his own journey, whether or not I should listen, right? And, mm -hmm. and I think it's an important point because it's not that I wasn't listening. I was listening very carefully, but I viewed this river that I was on that I saw so clearly from the customers that I had gained over the last year that my product hint was helping a lot of people get healthy. It helped me to get healthy, but it was also helping a lot of other people who had things that they were challenged with like type two diabetes. And again, this, this individual at this giant company with lots of experience was not willing to look, nor was he willing to ever say the word health what people were doing was in the name of health. And so I think this is a really important point because it's one that, you know, obviously you've got doubters um, who are playing in kind of a different world. They've had a different journey than you. But in addition to that, sometimes when you're so far ahead 
of other people. You think that this large company, the somebody with great experience is going to be the one that you have to worry about that's going to crush you, however you want to think about it. Instead, it's it's the people like me that see this white space and it's still really small and you're willing to incubate it and figure out how to get the consumers to recognize that it's actually going to help. When you're leading with the word help and you're developing a product or a service, that is such a powerful thing. And it, it, and it is not something that the large companies, maybe the public companies are focused on. They're focused on doing the same thing day after day. They're not focused on innovating and incubating um, and growing small markets. So that was that phone call that I had to uh, kind of endure, that I had to deal with, you know, maybe the degrading words in some ways where I'm really thankful for it because it was that moment when I realized this this clarity that I had a choice that I was either uh, going to give up or I was going to throw the gas on. And that was, you know, if I wouldn't have had that phone call, it wouldn't have been so clear to me. Wow. Never tell a girl she can't. Yeah, exactly. Don't call me sweetie, for sure. <laughs> I love it. It lit a fire under you. And you, like you said, the gas pedal just went to the floor and got boom, there you went. <laughs> but totally. you, you opened up a market and I love that. The white space, opening up the white space. That is so insightful because that you said the key word there is help. Something that would help individuals. Um, and that's, that therein lies that white space. So such a great takeaway. I love that. So what is the most enjoyable part about being an entrepreneur? I would say the most enjoyable part about being an entrepreneur, uh, you know, and I would add to it mission-driven entrepreneur, uh, is that if you're actually helping people, you're solving problems for people that they you know, had been challenged with for, for so many years and suddenly a product like Hint comes out, which is helping people to drink water, helping people to control their, you know, type 2 diabetes or help them get through chemotherapy while they're going through cancer treatments. I mean, all of these things are messages from from consumers that I've received over the years. And again, if you can create a product and um, become an entrepreneur that really focuses on a mission of helping, I mean, that's just an incredibly powerful thing and, and one where you know I would advise anyone to figure out what that is that you can do. What is your gift that you can focus on that is gonna help a lot of people and change lives? Yes, exactly. Changing lives. So you wrote in your book, you have the female entrepreneur leadership toolbox is what you called it. You write that when women take the leap into entrepreneurship, it's important to own their leadership toolbox. What does that mean? Very, very good question. Well, I think that the key thing in understanding is, look, I think women, uh, unlike maybe some men out there, but not all, are are really less likely to get started. Right? That they come up with ten reasons why they can't. Um, that you know, we've all heard uh, the the stories about you know when there's a job opportunity and how you know maybe the specs say you know, one thing, and then women are saying, well, but I don't exactly have that much experience. And men instead are, you know, even if the job is based in a certain place, I mean, men will show up for those jobs and say, well, it's close enough. You know, why don't I just go? They take more chances in some way. So for me, the leadership toolbox really boils down to you know, making sure, first of all, that we show up, that we use our intuition, that we um, that we use our scrappiness to really be able to figure it out. We also network with people. One mm -hmm. thing that I talk a, a lot about 
in, in uh, just my entrepreneurial journey is that because I didn't have uh, the beverage network and the beverage experience, um, not a lot of people in the beverage industry would talk to me. They instead labeled me as, oh, there's that tech executive that's starting this. It didn't matter whether or not I was successful in that other industry. It was like, let's just count her out before mm. uh, she even gets started. And so, I, I mean, frankly, I, I kind of used my network to figure out who are the people I know that have done challenging things? One, for example, is Leslie Blodgett. So she had started a brand called Bear Essentials. And for, again, for, for me looking at Leslie, I was able to see how did, or I would ask her questions like, how did you actually get the brand out there? How did you think about things over time? I mean, she ended up taking the brand, which was clearly, you know, the right thing to do. And she was one of the first beauty brands to go on QVC. I mean, mm. being able to do things that are really um, kind of, you know, forward thinking, they didn't seem forward thinking at the time. I mean, they were, they were more survival techniques. And, mm. and again, being being a female entrepreneur and kind of using those abilities that we already have but remembering those things and not putting up blockades but finding those things that we can do in order to go and make them happen yes i love that the the female entrepreneur toolbox <laughs> we've all got to have them i love it i yeah. love and it where the, and use where it every day yeah, exactly. So career, or excuse me, create your own opportunities. Now it's written that luck happens when preparation meets opportunity. How has this philosophy played a part in your entrepreneurial journey? Well, it's, it's really in my whole life. I mean, what I found is that, you know, when I do not actually have the opportunities. One of the things I talk about in the book is actually, um, I didn't have a lot of companies coming on my campus um, interviewing for entry level jobs out of college. And so instead what I figured out was that if I had the ability to understand which brands I wanted to go work for, in my case, it was Fortune Magazine, It it, allowed me the ability to start somewhere. And so I think so often, again, it goes back to this, this concept of we so often put up our, our walls and our blockades before we actually even get started. And so, you know, it ends up that if you, even the, the first opportunity like that right after college, I, I just, I would figure out what can I do? And I think having that mindset in your life leads you to be able to do that even in you know, your business, even in your first entrepreneurial journey. And I still think about, I mean, I think about, I was just explaining this uh, to somebody earlier today, how you know, somebody was asking me this question, how did you know how to lead during a pandemic? And I didn't, but I think, what I did do was recognize, first of all, that it was about the people, right? Mm -hmm. I was worried, I was concerned, I, I had empathy and for my team and wanted to make sure everybody was safe. And I wasn't gonna allow them to go and do something that I wouldn't do myself. And so when mm -hmm. I'm asking them to go out and merchandise shelves in the middle of the pandemic because we're an essential product, I started doing that myself. And, and because I just couldn't imagine. And again, maybe it's, I've never been in the military, but maybe it's similar to being in the military where, you know, you can't lead unless you're willing to do what your team is being requested to do. And so, again, I think that it just boils back to the same question that you asked, which is, you know, you have to create your own opportunities. You're going to see obstacles in the way, but, but you know, more than anything, you have to start somewhere and you have to try. And if something is, you know, not normal to you, is foreign to you, whatever, then you have to kind of face that fear 
and and know that you're going to get through it. It's not going to last forever. And I think more than anything, what I think about Jane is that the most important time, once you get through those times, is to look back on your challenging time. Look at those look at the beginning when you weren't sure how you were going to deal with the situation, how, you know, maybe you're thinking, gosh, I can't go get a job because uh, nobody's coming on my campus to interview or, or whatever. Instead, how did you figure it out? What steps did you take? Because if you take the time to go back and learn from your challenging times, that's how you become a better human. That's how you become more resilient. That's how you are able to be considered fearless and take on things because you know that you just can almost figure out anything if you just put your mind to it and you just start. Yeah. Taking action. Totally. Yeah, totally. Yes, I get it. And, and luck will find you. That's the whole key to that. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. It, it, yeah. It just doesn't appear, which is, it would be nice, but absolutely. I love that. So insightful. So what, this is a, a, an interesting question that I ask, what advice, if you were to go back in time, would you give your younger self starting your entrepreneurial journey? I think more than anything, understand that it's uh, it's your journey and every single thing that you're doing are little lessons, right? A little um, stops along the way that allow you to be who you're meant to become. And so instead of finding, you know, the perfect job or the, you know, doing the perfect thing, um, I, I think you have to be a little zen about knowing that, you uh, you just, it's more important to just keep going. And again, you're going to have challenges in your life. Um, they might not be ones that you even thought about, um, but what can you learn from those things so that you can, maybe those things, maybe those times, maybe the pandemic, just as an example for everybody, is one that you need to weather because there's a bigger thing up ahead that allows you to learn from this mm. experience. What did you learn about yourself along the way? Mm. What did you learn about your business that you needed to change in order to do better uh, next time and become you know, better overall? I think I've done that a lot. And I think that it would be something that I would share uh, you know, with my younger self that I share now with, you know, audiences all over the place, whether you're an entrepreneur or a student or somebody looking to do kind of a second, um, a second role of some sort. I, I think it's really, really important. Yes, absolutely. Learning as we go. Totally. Yeah. It, yeah. So is there any last words you'd like to share with our audience? I think that the most important thing that I, that I want people to really take away is enjoy what you're doing. And so often when, you know, I think about even friends of mine who might say I'm bored, I'm, you know, I'm not challenged anymore. You know, maybe you're sitting in, you know, C-suite and, and you're running a company, but you're not really, really engaged. You're not doing anybody any favors, including yourself. I think instead trying to figure out what you want to do every day. And, you know, it takes courage to sit there and think about what do I want to focus on? What are the things? For me, it was really around health. So often I hear from people that, you know, they, they're really incredible people, very, very smart, very accomplished, but they don't actually think about what is that thing that really, really interests them that they want to dig in further on. And I think that people need to take the time to really yeah. start to think about those things and explore. And, you know, I whiteboard it with stickies or whatever. What are the stupid things that you think about every day that maybe, you know, your friends don't think about? And uh, and that's a start to go and uh, 
kind of go down that river a little bit and actually see if there's anything there that you might really enjoy working on. And I wish as kids, we spent more time thinking about, you know, creating and, and, and dreaming and exploring about things that I'm super interested in. Because I think if we did, we might long-term think about whether or not we, you know, really want to go into that job on Wall Street or, you know, or even into business, right? I mean, maybe there's something that we really care about that we're, you know, meant to be kind of doing more with, but we're, but we're not. So more than anything, having time to dream and, and kind of explore a little bit more and also learn about those businesses that you're really interested in, I think will really help you to figure out, um, you know, what you want to do. And, and I think it's very tied, frankly, to, to, you know, mental health and, and our ability yes. to want to get up every day, um, I think is, is the most important um, piece that we should all be thinking about. Oh my gosh, Kara, that is so deep, I want to say, because it is. Um, it's taking your mind on a journey with imagination. Yeah. Because yeah. we are schooled to not imagine, to color in the lines, to take the social path that everyone else is taking because that's what we're supposed to do. But it's when we dream, it's when we create, it's when we brainstorm that we end up having that critical thinking. It's when we end up creating these businesses. I mean, every business totally. started with an idea, right? Yeah, absolutely. No, so true. I love it. I absolutely love it. That is the best piece of information so far. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Absolutely. Really, really excited. So because we're here on the Epic Vision Zone, I did want to ask you one last question. And I would like you not to use the name of the title of your book, because I know that's an easy one. So if okay. your life were an epic story, what would the title be? Uh, how about challenges uh, and winging it? I love it. <laughs> Perfect. It says it all, challenges and winging it. Oh my gosh, I'd pick that up Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. I love it. Thank you so much. Well, I once again, Kara, I want to thank you for spending your time with us here and giving us so much inspiring information this afternoon. And if anyone is looking for this incredible book, because you must buy it if you have not, please go Thank out you, and Shane. it's, oh, it's, it's a wonderful book. And I love that I can just earmark and you've got little bits and pieces. In other words, it's not pages and pages of writing. You've got little blocks where you have inspirational quotes. Um, I love that because I'll just flip through it and I'll say, oh, that's exactly what I needed today. <laughs> so it's really, Thank really, you. a, you're welcome. You're, it's a fabulous tool. So you can go to Amazon and be sure to connect with Kara. Her podcast is great. She has a newsletter as well. And you can find all of that information in the directory, the summit directory under Kara's bio. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at Jane Applegath. And if you're looking for a way to become an epic entrepreneur, join us at janeapplegath.com. This is the Epic Vision Zone, transforming your dream into epic success. Congratulations for signing up for the Female Entrepreneur Revolution. We're bringing you some of the most exciting female entrepreneurs from around the globe to share with you their knowledge, their ideas, their inspiration, and more importantly, their resources to elevate you to prosperity and freedom. And by being here, you're on the cusp of something great, your epic future. I'm Jane Applegath, founder of the Epic Vision Zone and producer of the Female Entrepreneur Revolution. Be sure to get your VIP pass and join me after the summit on June 16th for a very special VIP coaching session where we'll have hot seating, 
Summit Q&A, and a special guest appearance by one of our speakers just for you, where we'll ignite your vision, up-level your confidence, and set you on the path to your dream's epic success. This is your opportunity calling. It's time to take action. Get your VIP pass now. I can't wait to see you on the other side.